Most of the messages that he preached were on hell. He preached a great deal about hell. And I heard a man yesterday morning out here in the parking lot. I was somewhere and I turned the radio on and I heard a young man on the radio talking about hell. That was the first message that I had heard on hell on the radio in a long, long time. Not much of it in Knoxville, Tennessee, preaching on hell. But my friend, I believe that's something that we need to hear is about hell. When a man dies and his soul leaves this body, the first thing that strikes him is that he's no longer in the same place that he was. But he realizes that he starts falling into a pit. The Bible said that hell is a place of a bottomless pit. It is a place where this individual starts falling, falling, falling. The greatest sensation he realizes is that head over heels he's falling, falling, falling down into a pit. He's going further and further and further away from any love, from any peace, from any joy, from any rest, from anything that anyone would ever want. This man is going further and further and further away. And he keeps falling and falling and falling. You see, he's died and it's too late for him. Once an individual dies without God, my friend, you can't pray over their body. It's too late. There's not a thing you can do for them. They're gone. And he falls. And he continues to fall. But beneath him, hell opens its mouth. And beneath him, the screams and the wailing of the damned are coming up into his ears. He realizes that beneath him is another world. A world that he's never seen before. A world that he's had no part in. A world that he doesn't want any part of. But it's something he has no control over whatsoever. He's going down now. And his soul is being carried ever so swiftly down into the pit. And he continues to fall. The screams are reaching his ears, and the smell, and the smell of that that's coming up out of the pit of the dam. He smells it, and he hears it, and there's no doubt in his mind what lies beneath him. He knows that he's going there, and he can't stop it, and he continues to fall. And the heat now, not only do the screams rise up into his ears, not only does he smell the smell of the stench of the decaying matter beneath him, and the smell of hell, but my friend, the heat begins to rise up and engulf him. And he realizes that the deeper he falls into this pit, that the hotter it gets. And down he goes, deeper and deeper and deeper into the pit. The screams are growing louder, and the heat is hotter. Why? Because he's falling, my friend, into a pit. And the pit in the Bible is described as hell. So down he goes, and he can't stop himself. Maybe he claws at the sides. Maybe he does everything he can to try to stop this terrible plight that he's about to enter into. But I'm afraid it's too late. It's too late when you die, my friend. It's entirely too late. And down he goes ever further into the pit. Now the heat is unbearable. The heat has surrounded his body. And there, everywhere he turns, there's no peace. There's no way to get out of this searching, this searing pain that's cutting at him all around. He screams and he begs and he pleads, but it does him no good. There's no ear for his plea to fall upon. Nobody loves you in hell. Nobody's concerned about your suffering in hell. Nobody wants to hear about your plight when you go to hell. They're crying too, and they're weeping and they're wailing and they're moaning too. And down he goes. He's clawing and he's scratching and he's gnashing his teeth. He's gnashing his teeth because the pain now is unbearable and there's nowhere to go to. He can't get out of it. There's nothing he can do. And he continues to fall. But he realizes he's not alone. All around him are others that have gone on before him into the pit, into the terrible place called hell. And there they are weeping and they're wailing and they're gnashing their teeth and they're screaming. And some of them are screaming and praying and screaming and praying and praying and screaming. But it does them no good. Maybe all over the place you can hear the voices of people as they repent and they cry out to God from the depths of hell. And they say, God, God, please, if there's just one slight chance that I might be saved, please hear me now. I will out of this terrible place. 
but the sound of the damned echoes off of the walls of hell, and it doesn't reach any higher to the ears of God. He has closed the pit of hell, and there are no sounds of mercy arising out of that terrible sinking place. There is no mercy in hell. There's no peace in hell. There's no rest in hell. It's nothing but weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth in hell. And down he goes. And he continues to fall. And now there are those around him that are gnashing upon him and they're crying and they're screaming and they're tearing at him. And he fights to get away from them. And they fight to get away from him because he's screaming and gnashing. It's nothing but a madhouse like a pack of dogs as they tear one dog apart in the midst of them. That's all it is in hell. You say, when I get to hell, I'll have a big time with my crowd. Those that I've enjoyed my drunken party with here upon the earth. No, my friend, you'll scream when you get to hell with them, just like they scream. And I want you to know that my God is love. The Bible said He's love. And the Bible said if you don't love your brother, then you don't know God. And I know that. But I also know that His love comes to the pit of hell. And once that door is stopped, the love of God will not open that pit up again and go on down beneath it because He stays His hand and you continue to fall. You can't imagine how hot it would be. You say to yourself, I don't see that I can't understand. You say to yourself, how could God be merciful? How could God be a just God and allow someone to go to hell? God Almighty is an all knowing Knowing God. He knows everything there is to know. He brought out a good point a moment ago about that aircraft that Christ. It crashed because every soul was on that plane that God had brought together that day to go down for it to be the last day that they'd ever live upon planet Earth. Every one of them are dead. And tomorrow or the next day, there's going to be about 150 new made graves scattered out all over this country from those that died. And out of that 150 that died, how many of them went to hell? How many of them just like that went down into the pit and have been falling ever since then? Can you see the man as he reaches up, as he tries to cling to the sides, and he looks up, and he's going down, and he wants out of the pit, but there's no getting out of the pit. Once you go to hell, friend, there you'll stay forevermore. And down you continue to fall. The heat is terrible. You're gnashing your teeth. And all the memories as they flash through your mind of every opportunity you ever had to get saved. Of that preacher you made fun of there that gave you a track and tried to tell you about Jesus. Of the preacher that witnessed to you there in the church in the altar one day, but you wouldn't listen to him and you wouldn't get saved. Of the times when you were a child that Mama told you about Jesus and you said you didn't need him for just a little while longer. Let me live out my teenage years and have a big time and run with the boys and girls. And when I get older, that's for older folks, you say, I'll get saved. And all of those thoughts are running through your mind and all of that memory begins to haunt you because in vivid three-dimensional color right before your very eyes, never to be taken away, is the picture, my friend, of those that you love the most, of that that you miss the most, of that that would bring the greatest agony to your soul, of that that would make you cry the loudest, of that that would hurt you the most. The purpose of hell is to inflict torment. The purpose of hell is for God's justice and retribution to be brought upon a sinner. And there, my friend, it will not be loosed. It's upon you forever. Down you go. No.